news came through yesterday that Rena Buckley is retiring from hurling and football at county level anyway. Uh, Rena Buckley has put together one of the greatest careers in the history of Irish sport and I'm delighted to say she's with us this morning. Rena, how are you doing? Good, how are you? Yeah, I'm good. Um, now that you're a former inter-county uh, camogie and uh, football All-Ireland winner, how does that word former sit with you this morning? Ah, yeah, it's okay. I suppose, look, it's something I've been thinking about for the last number of months, so I didn't come to a, a decision quickly or anything like that. So, look, I'm comfortable with it. I'm after a great time of it. Um, I really, really enjoyed my time with Cork. I've been so lucky. I've been blessed to have, you know, played with great, great players, great management. You know, we've got great support over the years, and I'm really grateful for everything everything we've, 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 we've done over the years. When you were thinking about it over the last couple of months, what was the final decision for you because it's quite late into the season were you were you trying to get one last year out of it um i suppose i was i suppose i was thinking about it from you know november time on you know um and i suppose i had an inkling at christmas i didn't really have a massive draw to, to put in that level of commitment you know it's a huge huge part of your life um but i'm not complaining you know it's something i've, I've thoroughly enjoyed over the years um but i suppose I've, I've i've given all my 20s to it and my teens and things like that and I suppose, look, I've come to a part of my life where maybe I just don't want to put as much time into sport as I have been. No, I'm still going to continue playing with the club. And, you know, I, I, I've thoroughly, I'm not, I'm not moaning or anything like that. I've thoroughly enjoyed, you know, putting all that time into sport. But, look, I just want to take a little bit of a step back. Um, you know, and I, I, I sincerely hope the Cork teams have a fantastic year this year. But I'm, I'm kind of content not to be not to be part of it for this year. How did you manage being um, a dual player when clearly the demands on both sports are are absolutely massive and they only got bigger and bigger as the teams became more and more successful? Yeah, um, I suppose from from underage, I suppose we always played both football and camogie with Cork and it wasn't just me, there was a, there, there was a gang of us, you know. Um, you know, Breach Corkery would be, be an obvious person who was doing the both, but I suppose there was, you know, Mary O'Connor would always have, have played football in Camogie. There was Regina Curtin, Elena Reardon, um, I, I, Katrina Foley, Angela Walsh would have been a huge dual player. You know, there was there was a lot of us, um, I, I've probably forgotten a few people, no, there's, there was a lot of us doing the two, and I suppose the managements were, were very um, very understanding, you know, and you know, if, if there was a clash or something like that, we'd have a, a chat about what was the best thing to do, and managements were conscious, would we be tired and things like that. Um, and, and thankfully, you know, I suppose we, we were very willing to, to commit a lot of time, very willing to give a lot of energy and, you know, we were part of kind of very successful teams and, you know, when you get that opportunity to play on, on very good teams, it's very hard to turn it down. Um, and so I suppose we just, you know, between, between the players and the management, I suppose we just made it work. I suppose the other thing is that we keep hearing about the training to games ratio being one of the things that annoys GA players the most and that they do far yeah. too much training compared to games. At least you got to play twice as many games as most, almost everybody else. Absolutely. They're like, you know, from, from, from June, to, June to October, it was just going week to week, game to game, you know, and we were saying like that um, it would nearly be getting you, yourself mentally up for the games was nearly the, the toughest thing. You know, physically you'd be, you'd be okay, you know, you'd get a bit of downtime after the game, but... You know, we'd have a, a knockout championship game followed by a knockout championship game week in, week out. Um, so that was that was kind of difficult mentally. But, you know, at the same time, it was such a pleasure, you know. It was so enjoyable for, for, for a big game to be coming up. And, you know, sometimes if you, if you lost a big game, you might have another big game the following week and you'd have to pick yourself up fairly quickly. Um, so sometimes it was easy to forget, forget losses when you'd have a big game coming up as well. So here we had a fantastic time of it. You know, I'm so grateful for the for the run that we had, it was fantastic. Rena, at what point in your intercounty career did you realise you were going to be part of a special group of players that would go on to become one of the greatest teams that we've ever seen in Gaelic games? Yeah, um, I'm not sure really. Um, I suppose when I started playing with Cork, it was it was, um, it, it was very hard to get onto the Cork Camogie team, you know, so the Cork Camogie had, had established themselves as being an excellent team at the time, they'd won the, the all Ireland 2002, I came along in 2004, we got to the final that year, but an excellent tip team beat us at the time. Um, but like, I suppose I was, I was thrilled to get on the team, get to an All Ireland final, um, but I didn't expect to, you know, to, I remember that, that year in 2004, I remember my brother was living abroad and I remember he came home because I remember he, thought, he, he was saying, I might never get the chance to play in All Ireland again, he'd hate to miss it. Um, little did we know we got to play in loads of All Ireland finals after, you know. Um, I suppose... I, I was very lucky, you know, I was part of very successful underage teams as well. But I suppose that was just the norm for me. I kind of didn't realise it, but 
we had great players coming through and we had some excellent players that were there as well and the combination of the two meant that, you know, I suppose we, 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 had, a, we had a very good gang that kind of lasted a long time and, you know, I suppose, I suppose I'm just very lucky to have come along at the right time, to be honest. So it seemed that it, it was almost a couple of years of being involved in the Cork setup before you looked around the dressing room and thought to yourself, right, this is a very special group of players and I guess there was a humility that came with that then. Oh, absolutely, yeah, yeah. Um, I suppose that from the Camogie side of things, I suppose we've, I suppose one, one regret is that we never managed a three in a row. Um, we, we tried it a couple of times and we, we failed, things, things went a little bit wrong. Um, but I suppose on the football side of things, you know, um, we managed a five in a row and we thought it was, it was unprecedented. Um, you know, in modern GA, you know, Kerry ladies have done a nine in a row back in the day, but, you know, for modern GA it was, it was phenomenal and we thought it was frightening and we thought, we'd, you know, we'd never be part of five in a row team again. It was amazing. Um, we lost the following year in 2010 and then we go on and do a six in a row after that. It was just phenomenal to be part of, you know, it was, you know, we had a great gang and, you know, people kept pushing, pushing the boundaries, raising the bar and, it was fantastic to be part of, um, and I don't think anyone ran away with themselves or anything like that. You know, training was hugely competitive the whole time, and people were always trying to make sure they didn't want to be losing or you know bring the team down. You know, it was great, great atmosphere to be part of. The other thing, Rena, is that you've kind of uh, had a front row seat for the explosion in popularity of both Camogie and ladies football. It seems maybe the ladies football is a little bit further down the road than Camogie just at the minute in terms of the profile that it enjoys. But you guys set the standard that other counties had to match and that in turn has raised the quality of the whole sport. I don't know if you felt like you were part of something like at the time, if now retrospectively you can kind of pinpoint and go, yeah, we were really important in, in the evolution of this sport as something that is on TV all the time, that gets big audiences, um, people showing up and actually big audiences watching on TV too. Yeah, I know, I suppose we'd be a bit, I suppose when you're in the bubble, you're not really taking a whole pile of notice of that. No, when you are playing, you would notice that um, there certainly was a change as things were going on. You know, I remember we were driving through Dublin at one stage, and I remember I saw Breach Corkery on a on a poster in Dublin, and I thought, "By God, things have changed." You know, um, and and certainly I remember the first time that ladies football, the a league game was on on TV, and T G Carr made a huge huge um, change to that. You know, and um, th that was I remember that was a, a big thing. We thought, "Geez, we're on on T G Carr." Um, so I suppose, you know, bit by bit things got, a, you know, a bit more media coverage and things like that. But I suppose it didn't make a whole lot of difference when you're playing, you know, you're training away and you're still looking to the next game, regardless of, of the media coverage. You know, you're you're looking to, to do as best as you can for the team and the team is looking to, you know, to, to do as well as it can, you know. And I suppose that media stuff is kind of um, kind of external to the, to the team as such, really. Yeah, unbelievably important role that you guys had in that though, in, in actually just making sure that everybody was familiar with it and the fact that you came back year after year, people became familiar with you guys and your style of play and all that kind of stuff, so I don't think that, that um, can be understated. The other thing is that, like, and this is something else that um, we keep talking about with GA people, you're obviously an, an amateur, but you have your own business, you're a physiotherapist and like you're an entrepreneur, it's hard to be your own business and to, um, you know, your name's above the door, to be responsible for that and to, at the same time, maintain uh, a sports career at the level that you've done. So, like, I guess that's the other side of this, is that you, you need to continue to develop everything else and there has to come a point where you go, OK, I need to focus maybe on exterior things to sport after a while. Yeah, and, you know, I, I'd probably view that as probably a good thing, to be honest, you know. Um, I think it's nice that sport is your hobby, you know. If, if things go wrong on Sunday, you, you're going to work Monday and Monday's going to, you know, you're going to have to concentrate on work Monday and, you know, do your little recovery and all that as well. But, you know, I think it's nice that sport is a hobby, you know. Um, I suppose I've always, you know, known that I've had a, a career in terms of, you know, your, your college career and your work and so on. Um, and I think it's it's a healthy way to be for sport to be to be your hobby and to realise when sport finishes, you know, life goes on, you know, it's not the end of the world. Um, so I, I, I think that's that's probably... I think that I think it's not stated enough how, how important it is that that um you know life is life and sport is is kind of only part of it you know that you know you can't be playing at a, at a very high level for your whole life um but you can you know you can be forever be involved in sport but it's just a subsection of life really. And would you be interested in being involved in in high level sport again like in a professional capacity as a physio or even as a as a coach slash manager into the future? Ah, yeah, like I, I, I look, I've no plans made or anything like that, but I certainly love sport. Um, you know, I, I, I enjoy sports physio for sure. Um, obviously, I haven't done a whole pile of it 
at a high level because I've been playing, you know. Um, but look, I'm, I'm, I, I love physio, I, I love Jay, um, and, you know, I'm, I'm sure I'll, I'll, I'll figure something out along the way. Yeah, you mentioned there that sport is a hobby first and foremost, but there surely is some part of you, given the success that you've had, that sees it in a very, very competitive way, that you want to still feel like you're competing in sport at a high level, be it even in the role of a physiotherapist, and feel like you're having high levels of success once again, because that's a drug in itself, the, the success and the winning all the time. Ah, yeah. Um, so obviously, I, I'm not going to give up completely. I'll still, mm. be playing, I'll still be playing with my club, so I'm playing with an Iscara and Camogie and Dunamore in football. So, you know, I'll certainly have a competitive, um, you know, element there. And I'm sure next year I might uh, run races and things like that and get involved in other things. Um, and, you know, I'll be involved in, in on the sidelines, certainly as a physio. So, um, look, you can't keep on going forever. Um, I think the time is kind of right for me now to take a step back. You know, there's more players there that will fill the jersey for sure. And you know, I wish them, them the very, very best and I hope they get as much enjoyment out of it as I have. Rita, great stuff. Enjoy. Thanks a million. Congratulations on an amazing career. Thank you very much, lads. Appreciate it. It's uh, Rena Buckley there. Just the 18 all Ireland medals. It's incredible. Uh, like, that's never going to be surpassed. Uh, I'm, I'm confident in that. You're getting a limb there on. Uh, <laughs> it's it's the, the hottest take that's ever been said in the show that 18 all Ireland medals will not be surpassed. It's insane. It's an incredible tally. Um, yeah, and congratulations on her retirement. It's like there is also kind of. I'm not sure is it a sense of duty or whatever like that, but this is the. It's an unbelievably famous cohort of players uh, when it comes to ladies football. That there is an ambassadorial role there for this group of players if they want it, of course. I mean, there's, there's never any pressure on them to actually have to take up that sort of PR role. No, but I think they did it. You know, I think that was kind of. Uh, it, it is unfortunate that they didn't make one of those um, documentaries when they had the opportunity a couple of years back. Well, there is the book uh, written by Barry White, which is. Uh, yeah. Uh, which is a brilliant read. So, I mean, there, there, there is at least documentation of this. There is at least kind of a, a text there that can be a source of inspiration for other people. And Kids don't read books anymore, Owen. Well, you know that. Like, the, the, thing, the thing about this Cork team is that their success was so wild that it transcends the boundary of gender where there are boys in Cork as well who are like, holy crap, there's somebody in my county who's got 18 All-Ireland medals. It, so it transcends the whole idea of just being a ladies' football story. It is a truly great sporting story. Um, yeah, of course, it'd be easier if the kids could sit back and watch a documentary. But, you know, they can read as well. People can read these days, Ger. They, they teach them early these days. They can read, they just refuse to do so. Uh, right, let's uh, bring in the morning's newspaper headlines.